Good morning and welcome to Live with Jenny Galata. I'm glad you joined me this morning. As you join online this morning, I want you just to let me know. Just type in the in the um, right at the bottom there. Just type in where you're watching from. It'd be nice to know who's watching and where you're watching from. Amen. I know a lot of times we have people from California. We have people from Colorado. We have different ones watching from different places. So it's always nice to say hello to everybody and uh, let you know that I recognize you're watching. So thank you for taking time today to tune in and watch this video. Praise the Lord. I pray this finds you all full of faith and prospering in the spirit. Amen. Amen. We need to be prospering in the Spirit, especially during this day and time, don't we? Amen. We depend upon the Holy Spirit to lead us and the Holy Spirit to guide us and the Holy Spirit to show us what to do and the Holy Spirit just to be with us all the time. Uh, he is our rock. He is the, the one that we depend upon all the time. So, Lean in to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, it's through him that we are able to remain strong and steadfast in faith. Good morning, Miss Kathy. Nice to see you this morning. Watching all the way from California. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where it's been very warm, I know. And I'm praying for California's weather to uh, lighten up and be cooler for you guys. Amen. I know here in North Carolina, it has been a little cooler in the evenings. And so I tell you what, the humidity has gone down considerably. So I'm enjoying that nice weather. It's just the beginnings of fall. It hasn't quite hit yet. The trees are still green, but we're going to begin to see some changes, I'm sure, pretty soon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, praise God. I just am thankful to the Lord for what he's doing in my life, and I know that he's working in your life as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know, the key to staying in faith and the key to staying uh, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might is being in him. Uh, because there's no fear when we're in him. There's that peace that passes all understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds stayed on him. And that's how we're able to be straight, uh, that's strong in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us, in triumph and through us spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of him and you know when you think about that scripture that verse think about this christ won the victory he got the victory he got the keys to the kingdom uh, back from the enemy good morning mr jim good to see you online this morning he got the keys and so that's the victory he gained uh, from the enemy. He went into hell and took back the keys. So that's how we can stand in faith and in the victory. And so I believe that's what the enemy is seeing is when we are walking in the strength of the Lord, he's seeing the victory of Christ and it makes him mad. So that's why he attacks us. So we have victory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody might ask, good morning, Nancy, good to see you this morning, and Linda, good morning, good morning, good morning, glad to see you all, amen. Somebody might ask, well, how do I stay in him? Uh, I'm glad you asked, as Pastor Michael would say. Ephesians 4.22 says, put off the old man. You know, we have an old way we used to do things, the old person that used to be a certain way, all of our old habits, our old methods and mannerisms. It says, put off that old man. Take it off like you do a coat. Take it off. Put it off. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, taking on spiritual attitudes. 
We have to renew our mind to the word of God so we'll have a better attitude and a better uh, thoughts uh, taken in, take them captive. Amen. Amen. We have to take those thoughts and every circumstance and yield it to the word of God. That's so important. It takes discipline when we have to do that. We have to discipline ourselves to settle those thoughts in our mind when they come because they're going to be negative thoughts. They're going to be fearful thoughts. And we have to take those, capture them, make them subject to the word of God. Take the word of God and make that word come out of our mouth before we talk about the problem, don't we? Amen. So, you know, our first defense is usually trying to figure out, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix this? Well, instead of that, go to the Word. Find out what God says about that circumstance. Amen. You know, there's just some things in this world that cannot be changed. Look around. Our government, our nation, there are things that are going on we cannot fix. We can't change it. We cannot do it in our own might. We can't do that. Good morning, Miss Millie. Glad to see you join us this morning. There are decisions that are being made that we have no control over. But the most important thing when we face all of these situations that are happening in our world and in our nation is no fear. Do not fear. Because the enemy will try to come in. He'll try to bombard our thoughts. He'll try to say, look what's happening. What do you think is going to happen now? Oh, get scared and, and frightful over all these things. Don't do it. Don't yield to that. At the sign, the first very sign of fearful thoughts, the first very sign of these things, come in with the word of God and tell that thought, no, no, God did not give me a spirit of fear. He gave me a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Resist that, those thoughts of fear. Resist them. Tell them to be subject to God's word. Amen. You know, when Jesus was talking in Luke 21, when he talked about the signs of the end of the age, one of the things that he said, he says, now, when these things happen, when they begin to happen, look up, lift your eyes up. Amen. Look up. Amen. Lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Praise God. Jesus is coming back soon. The signs of the times are showing he's coming back soon. We need to be ready. We need to stay in faith. Stay out of fear because if you're in fear, you're out of faith. So be in faith, not in fear. Amen. So remember, we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, as we get started this morning, that was just a little prelim. I'm going to pray and let's let's just praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord God, we just thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the word of your power. Thank you for empowering us to remain steadfast, to remain strong in faith and grounded upon the word of God, grounded upon your promises. Father, we choose not to worry. We will not worry. We will not fret. We will not be moved by what we see or what we hear. We'll not allow it to move us away from faith. We trust you with all of our hearts. And this morning, Father, I pray for all of those within the sound of my voice to be encouraged, to be strengthened in their inner man, and to gain a stronger spiritual strength to remain in faith and not faint. And Father, we continue to speak the word of faith over our nation. We declare the word of God. Righteousness prevails. Jesus is Lord. And we pray and ask for an awakening to God across our nation, in our families, in our church, with our friends, and in our leadership, Father. We come against the spirit of fear, and we rebuke its effects in our lives in Jesus' name. And we praise you for the assurance of faith in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know... Uh, because there's been so much talk 
about sickness lately. There's just, I mean, it's just all over the place. You hear people are talking about the variant. They're, they're talking about the Delta. They're talking, oh, this is flu season. It's coming. Get your flu shot and all this other stuff. Because of these things, I want to reaffirm to you what the Word says. I know you know these things, but I want to reaffirm it to build your faith in this area so that you will be strengthened and re-encouraged in these things uh, against uh, sickness. Praise the Lord. <coughs> now, Colossians 1.12 says, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it says, giving thanks to the Father. <coughs> A tickle in my throat, excuse me, pardon me. <coughs> In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. <clears throat> it says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. He's qualified us. He's made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints. Praise God. Do you realize that in the inheritance, healing is there? It's ours, praise the Lord. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, golly, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And then verse 13, this is where it's really at. It says, the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been we have been delivered and drawn out of the control of the, do, the dominion of the devil. He has no authority and no dominion over us. We, we just really need to grasp that and understand that. So when the devil comes, when he tries to come in and tries to steal our healing, when he try, and he does, we need to grab onto that. No, because you don't have any authority or control over me, I've been transferred into the kingdom of love, Jesus. I've been transferred into that kingdom. Praise the Lord. You know, the knowledge of the word that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy is confirmation that anything that comes that's destructive is not of God. So that would include sickness. So when sickness tries to come, when infirmities of any sort try to come, then that means it's not of God, it's of the enemy. It's coming to destroy, to kill, and to steal. Amen. He's coming to steal it. Sickness is not of God. Say that. Sickness is not of God. Praise the Lord. All sickness all say all amen all sickness it doesn't matter how serious it is or how not serious it is it could be a hangnail it could be a little headache it could be a little cough it could be whatever you're dealing with is not from god amen it's destructive it's from the pit of hell and when these symptoms, no matter how small they are if it's a little headache or a little hangnail or whatever what we need to do is we need to have, instead of having the tendency to allow it to persuade us to just tolerate it, oh, it'll go away, oh, it'll be gone in a little while, oh, this is just normal, if I don't eat right away, I get headaches. No, don't tolerate those things. You have to immediately, when it comes, rebuke it. Because when the big stuff comes, when the serious things come, because you see, when sickness comes, it doesn't just all of a sudden show up, big bang, whoop, there you are, sick. First of all, you start having little symptoms. You'll start having a little fever. You'll start having a little cough. You'll start having a little sniffles. You'll start having little things that happen. And then all of a sudden, it gradually leads into the big thing. But if we'll start attacking the symptoms when they start coming, if we'll start attacking those right away, we won't have so much... Uh, difficulty in overcoming or exercising faith over the large things 
That's what we have to do. So start right away rebuking and taking authority over those small things. We have to stand against that attack wholeheartedly and fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Immediately. Praise God. Faith, I've heard this said this last week, and I tell you what, it has resonated in my spirit. Faith begins where the will of God is known. A lot of people don't know and don't understand that healing is from God. They'll say, well, if it be God's will that I get healed, well, if it's God's will for this, you need to understand what God's will is, and you find it out by going to the Word of God. 1 Peter 2.24 says... By his stripes, you have been healed. Right there, it says it. And Isaiah 53, 5. By his wounds, you are healed. You know, we have to understand when the word of God said it, God declared it, he meant it. He didn't just say it and say, well, I hope that you can, you know, I hope that this happens. No, he wants you to grab onto that, take a hold of it and live in it in, in the name of Jesus. Psalms 91, in verse 9, it says, If, this is the big key word, if, you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels charge over you to protect you. You see, that is what we need to understand. God desires and wants you to walk in perfect health and in the healing power. When he wants that healing power to operate in you. Amen. Faith will stop at the question, is this of God? Uh, you know, is healing really from God? Is there, You know, does he really want me healed? He is the Lord that heals. Amen. He is Jehovah Rapha. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He provided for that. Amen. He even created the body to begin to restore itself. When you cut yourself, it doesn't just stay cut forever. It starts healing itself. It's that he created that. He wants us healed. Praise God. He didn't create sickness. We're to live and declare the works of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus came, he said, to, to uh, give life and give it more abundantly. He redeemed our life from destruction. Amen. That word uh, redeemed means he rescued us from destruction. He rescued us. And that word destruction in another translation is the word pit. That's the kind of pit that they used to dig to trap like lions in out in the forest. They'd big, dig, dig this big hole, this big pit, and then cover it and, and so you wouldn't be able to tell. So the animal, when he came, he wouldn't know that was a, a hole and avoid it. He would just fall into it. It was like a trap. Well, the devil sets those traps all along. He tries to set those traps and he tries to get us to fall prey to those things and he wants to get us, but he says that he delivered our life from destruction. Praise the Lord. Now, just because we feel the symptoms or just because we see symptoms does not mean we are not healed. You know, a lot of people go, well, I'm, I'm just dealing with, I'm just so sick. No, he does not mean you are not healed. What it means is uh, you are the healed and Satan is trying to steal your healing. We are not the sick trying to get healed. Satan is trying to steal what already belongs to you. Don't allow him. Rebuke him. Stop him. Start fighting right now. Start telling that symptom. No, in the name of Jesus, I forbid you to operate in my body. You have the keys to the kingdom to forbid or to permit. And what you forbid, heaven's backing you up. What you permit, heaven's backing you up. He'll either allow it or he'll either forbid it with you. And he'll stand and that word will stand and it'll come against that force of darkness that's trying to steal what really belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Stand against it. Praise God. Amen. We have to get our faith geared up for the healing. 
right, way down on the inside of us so that we can conquer even the slightest little thing. Sometimes we just tolerate those little things. We just do. We just say, well, it'll go away. And, you know, I find myself doing that sometimes when something happens and I got a little headache and I'll just sit there and I'll think, well, I just pray for it to go away. No, you got to immediately take authority over it. Say, no, I'm not having that. I rebuke you. And I have found when I have done those things, when it's those little things, you know, they go away quick. They go away quickly. They're gone in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. At the very onset, onset, every symptom come against it. Start magnifying the Lord. Don't magnify the symptom. Magnify the Lord. Make him bigger than the symptom. Amen. Because he is. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, we all know that scripture. But I like what the Amplified Version says. I like it just explains it so much clearer. It says, and faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. You see, the word of God, Jesus spoke. Jesus said those things. He spoke it. He said it. When you hear the word of God preached on those things, what you're doing is just actually like hearing Christ himself, Jesus himself saying it, and then you build your faith upon it. Well, if Jesus said it, then praise God, I receive it. It must be so. Praise the Lord. Faith for something that we're believing is a result of hearing God's word preached. Amen. I guess that's why it's really important to go to church if you're able or listen to the preached word of God because the anointing of God for that specific situation is loosed upon the word of God and upon that minister as he ministers the word of God. Now, I understand that in this day and time, there are some people who cannot go to church. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. There's no condemnation. Amen. You can watch TV. You can watch, if you're unable to go to church, you can watch the healing. You can watch the minister online and you can still receive faith from the ministry that's being done online but if you're well able to go to church i ask you to make an effort to do it amen praise the lord praise god amen amen now i said this last week and i i, I believe i did it was last week i said there are people who want to be healed but just the desire alone isn't going to bring it forth we all want to be healed we all want that but it takes faith in god's word we have to operate in faith everything comes by faith we operate we live by faith we operate by faith we believe we receive by faith everything is by faith we believe god's word it's good uh, to know that desire is also cooperating with our faith we desire to have that healing but it alone will not bring forth the changes that we desire. Doing the word and what it says to do is what's required to obtain the promises. Now, what does 3 John 2 says? It says, John said, Beloved, I wish above all things or pray above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. That is what he wants us to do. I pray this for you. We say, well, I want prosperity. I want prosperity. Well, just alone wanting it isn't going to make it happen in your life. You've got to exercise faith in that area to receive what the word says. The word says, give and it shall be given unto you. So you have to operate the word. You have to be a doer of the word. It also says to bring all the tithes into the storehouse and prove him so that he will open and see if he won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there isn't room enough to receive it and rebuke the devourer for your sake. You see, there's a doing involved in the obtaining of the promise. You have to do something to obtain the promise. That's what faith is all about. Some people say, well, I just want to be happy. I just have that desire. I just want 
to be happy. Well, praise the Lord. The word says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise God. You know what? It also says, and in his presence is fullness of joy. See, that's the doing of it. You have to go into his presence to get to that fullness of joy. Because when you're in his presence, there's nothing else that can bother you. There's nothing else that can flow through your brain. When you're with the Lord, you're like, this is heaven on earth. Praise God. Amen. You have to exercise your faith in the word to obtain the promise. Don't fall prey to the devil's suggestions because he's going to bring them. He's going to suggest that this is going to stay. This is a disease that your family had. This is a sickness that was always uh, relative in your family. You know, you have, a, you have authority over generational curses. You have authority over those. <clears throat> you can take authority over those in the name of Jesus. The enemy uses the power of suggestion and he uses fear to attack. Praise the Lord. We have to come against it. We have to stand against it. Recognize it and stand against it immediately. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, when you think about a concert pianist and they practice every day, they practice day after day after day, hour after hour after hour. But you know what? With their dedication and their commitment, there is much reward, much reward. But we have to understand that if we'll do the same thing in the spirit, if we'll do the same thing in faith, if we'll do the same thing and stand on the word of God faithfully and not give in to our thoughts, not give in to what we're hearing or what we're seeing. If we won't speak those things, but we'll speak God's word instead, we'll begin to see our faith operate and we'll begin to see the Lord manifest his healing power in our body. It'll start happening immediately. I remember years and years and years ago when we first got spirit filled, I got attacked and I don't, I think it was the flu or a bad cold or something. And I was staying home from work and I was really not feeling well at all. And I remember my mother because we'd gone to see her and she's a, was a great woman of faith. And she told me at that time, she says, you've got to stand right now and build your faith in healing and believe God for the healing power to come on you. Now, it took a few days, but I got my healing, and I overcame that thing by my testimony and by speaking to it, and it was a tough road at the time. But a little by little, as each time symptoms would try to appear over over course of time in life, I just started speaking to them, started telling them, stop it, no, in the name of Jesus. And then you just have to continue to do that. Amen. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 says, Be well balanced, be temperate, be sober-minded, be vigilant and watchful and cautious at all times because your adversary, the devil, listen, he's roaming about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to gobble us up. He wants to take us into his, he wants to take us into that fear realm, into that, into that realm of doubt and unbelief. He wants to, Pardon me. He wants to bring us over there. He wants to seize upon us and devour our faith. But it says in verse 9, withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted and established and strong and immovable and determined. We have to be determined not to allow the enemy to steal our faith for healing for our prosperity, for whatever you're standing for and believing for. If you're believing for your family to be born again, if you're believing for things to change in your life or in your family's life, don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give up. Believe. Keep standing. Keep confessing the word of God. Amen. You know, as I'm closing, I want to remind you that the price of constant victory is watchfulness. It's constant watchfulness. And then we have to remember that we have the authority to declare the end of a thing in the middle of the trial. You have the authority to declare what it's going to be, how it's going to end. It's going to end in your favor or not in your favor. 
in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, maybe today's word was something you already heard, or maybe you never heard it before, but however it was for you, I want it to be a reminder in your life to stand strong in the face of any adversity because you are well able to overcome it. You're an overcomer. You know, there, there are things in our life that are in the world, even in the world that we don't have, uh, we don't have the ability to take, we don't have the ability to change it. We can't change that. But we do have the ability to be an overcomer. We are an overcomer. So you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. The Lamb, the Jesus' blood speaks loud and it will cover you and protect you. Praise the Lord. So resist the symptoms. Speak to them. Tell them no in the name of Jesus. Speak the word of truth over you and yourself and your family. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you today in the Lord. God is so good. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be a success. He wants you to be walking in the word of God and not in fear. Don't give in to those thoughts and those things you see or you hear. For heaven's sakes, God is greater. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. Lord God, Lord God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouraging word. Thank you for strength. Thank you, Father, for faith to arise within us. We thank you, Father, as we give the Holy Spirit permission to remind us of the word of God in every instance in life that we are faced with. Instance in healing. Instance in in, in our finances, Father, instant in, in believing for our restoration for our family. Quicken our hearts and our minds today with the word of God. Father, today I pray for all of those that are listening to have the healing power of God in operation. I know there are some that are dealing with the symptoms of sickness in their body. And I stand in agreement with them that that sickness, that disease, that infirmity, that report from the doctor is null and void and has no way to prosper in their life. They walk in the victory that you have promised them, which is healing. By Jesus' stripes, they were healed. Father, they have that healing. They walk in it. They live in it. We declare it over them and stand in agreement with them that it's manifesting in their life, in Jesus' name, throughout their body. We speak to that blood disorder in the name of Jesus and command you to line up according to the word of God. Be healed in Jesus' name. We speak to that stomach disorder in the name of Jesus. Stop it. Line up according to the word of God. By Jesus' stripes, you're healed. Father, I speak to those muscles and command them to operate and function properly the way that you called them and created them to. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. We come against COVID and the variant and those symptoms of flu in Jesus' name. We speak healing to all of those that have been uh, 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 have been attacked with that in the name of Jesus. We pray for re divine recovery. This is the year, Father, your prophets said that was the divine healing of God. This is the year of divine healing. So we pray for it over the people of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. No evil shall befall them. No plague come near their dwelling. And I pray for the pain in their bodies to be gone in the name of Jesus. We root out the, the cause of that pain in Jesus' name. Command it to be removed and the healing process begin in Jesus' name. Now I pray for peace and a calm spirit. And I rebuke the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it, Father. And I give you praise in the name of Jesus. And we said, Amen. Praise God. Amen. 
I want to uh, tell you, if you have a specific prayer request you want me to pray for personally, please email me or text me or send it to me, message me on here. Let me know how I can pray for you. You know, I love you all so much. Thank you so much. Yes, and happy Grandparents Day to all the grandparents. Amen. Thank you for reminding us, Miss Millie. Amen. It was good to see all of you online. Thank you for joining me. You bless my heart. You're a blessing to me. And I appreciate all the cards and letters. I just am getting those. I appreciate those. You just bless my heart so much. God bless you. Amen. And remember, stay strong in the Lord. Don't give in to the works of the enemy. Be faithful. Amen. And in his presence, there's fullness of joy. So stay in his presence. I love you all. Bye.